hi everybody. I'm going to add a video here showing uh, the new adjustable small reverb and I'm going to start off by just showing you the old minimum min reverb block here which, which has no control panel at all. I'm going to use the click simulator file and I'm going to put on my headphones so I can hear what this sounds like along with you at home. So yeah, I guess if the pod is turned all the way down, it doesn't do anything. So now I'm going to turn the pod up very slowly. Turn it up too high, it just starts overloading. So here's what you get. If you do this, just take a pod control and put it in the reverb time of the min reverb. You can bring it up to about I don't know, about 0.6 before it starts sounding ridiculous. And the other thing you can tell about this is that it's a pretty bouncy sounding reverb. It's not exactly what I would call smooth. I'm going to turn it up a bit. Yeah, and that's... So let's come over here and look at the, the new small reverb patch that I put together. I, I put a control panel on this one and look, let's look at all the f amazing things that are on here. Uh, we got input gain and so that's the gain of each one of these before they get mixed together. And I notice it's got stereo inputs now. This is the coefficient of the all pass in that chain of four all passes in the input section and here's where we can adjust them all and I've made sort of an adjustment in the all pass range of what well, looks like zero but I don't think is really up to 125 milliseconds now I want you to understand something about this is that you can run out of memory really easily here the memory indicator down here does not update when you make changes in the control panel. That's something that I thought about trying to figure out how to do but never did. So in order to judge the change you have to go over here and start the simulator and you can see that bumped up a little bit. The way to update the resource usage indicators down here for lack of a better term is to actually just quickly start and stop the simulator. And so what I'm going to do here is a little experiment. So these are the that chain of four all passes on the input. Again, each one goes from zero, which is not quite zero, but pretty short, down to about 125 milliseconds. You can use the method I talked about to, to adjust the lengths here according to some mathematical formula, but I figured I'd just get in here and, and, and do this and see what happens if we adjust it by ear. Down here we have the loop all pass coefficient, and this controls the coefficient in the two all pass blocks in the in the loop and what we have as you remember from the previous article is all pass filter followed by a delay and take a look at this is that the all pass starts at 107 milliseconds and goes up to about 153 so this is definitely getting into the time where you would actually be able to perceive this as an echo. I mean, hundred. it's like down in the slapback range. So there's a, a definite difference between the sound of a click going through these short all passes compared to the long one, and it really does depend a lot on, on how close that is to, uh, to being in the perceivable echo range. And then the delay that follows the all pass is simply just a delay. It's a pure delay. It's not a comb filter with any feedback. It's just a delay and with just that. And then here's the, here's the second one. And, and we could get all mathematical on this, but I figured I wouldn't. And let's just see what happens when I set these to this kind of arbitrary value. I'll turn up the delay. Alright, you can hear that. That's kind of bouncy. Right now, the next thing 
that I'm going to do is to turn down the all pass coefficients to zero. So this means that there's not going to be any smearing of the sound of the transients. And what we're going to hear is a bunch of echoes. And the, the all pass chains are not going to reflect anything back, so there's not going to be any echo buildup or anything like that at all. All right, so what we should hear is some clicks going through the loop. So that's actually kind of a cool little rhythm. Did it, did it, did it, did it, it. Something we want out of our reverb. Uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll turn up the input all pass to about 60. And what this is going to do is this is going to give us a little poof going into some delays, a recirculating delay. So we'll hear a poof come in because the, the input all pass chain is going to poof out that, that initial impulse and then it'll just go into the reverb ring which at this time with the uh, all passes all loop all pass set to zero is just going to be a, a recirculating delay. Alright so you heard that it turned from a click all right, into kind of a poof. To me it sounds more like kind of a tennis ball in the in the distance rather than a click and I don't know if there's really any difference between it being positive or negative but maybe I'll do some measurements and, and see if there really is any kind of difference in having a positive or negative all pass coefficient as you get it down towards zero it starts sounding more clicky but there's a whole range of sounds along here Bump it up to 0.22. It's starting to sound more like, I don't know, ripping paper rather than a click. Right there, it's really starting to spread out. Get it up to 0.46. Okay, that's good. That's, that's starting to sound pretty smooth. Let's just bump it up here a bit more. to me is that once you get it up that high it starts sounding a little different. It doesn't get smoother, it gets something else. See that's almost starting to take on a, a reverby character all by itself with kind of like a, a sharp impulse rather than a, I don't actually even pretend to know why all this happens other than mess around with it and I think you get some pretty interesting results. So the other thing you can do here while we're just goofing with this is is make these all a little longer. Let's see what that sounds like. Oops, I made them so long that I ran out of RAM. Let me make just some of them longer. Alright, that's actually not sounding so great. That sounds kind of gritty. So that kind of leads me to believe that really a better setting for the all pass length is actually down here but I gave this uh, that kind of range so that you could mess with it and and see what you come up with so so I don't even know where I was before it seemed like it sounded better than that but uh, yeah, give this a shot to... all right so that's sounding kind of kind of nice and leave that there. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this over here so I can see how much RAM I really have left, is I'm going to turn up the, uh, the all pass over here. And so listen to this. We have, okay, so we have a little tennis ball in the distance bouncing around. So let me boost this up to just like 30. Okay, that's starting to sound a little bit smoother. That really sounds quite quite smooth. So the next thing you can do is you can kind of mess with these, you know, delay line lengths. And again, I don't have any any plan or 
See, that actually sounds fairly smooth. It sounds, to me, it sounds smoother than the original small reverb. So it looks, as far as I can tell, there's actually an opportunity for optimizing this, maybe by using more of the delay ram. It, one of the nice things about the small reverb is that the the basic one given there gives you a little extra room, so you can have a chorus or a flange or a small delay over there if you want. A lot of the reverbs actually allocate all of the RAM, and so then you can't do that unless you start messing with things. One other thing I wanted to do was mess around with the loop all pass here with this turned all the way to zero. So this means we won't be sending poofs in, we'll just be sending clicks in. Set that really to zero. Okay, let's listen to this. Alright, that's just a bunch of clicks now. But you can you can you can tell how they kind of build up and, and bounce around there and again if we I'll just go in the other direction for no particular reason. If I turn that down, there's less feedback, so it won't be as echoey. But again, you can you can play with that. And I think sort of a practical maximum for the all pass setting is about 0.70. I mean, and let me just bump it up here a little bit. Just set these as high as I can go without running out of RAM. I'm not getting there that fast. Yeah, make these all a bit longer. Push that up. So that's pretty interesting. Now, I didn't put any filtering in this, so this is just a, a constant sound. It doesn't de uh, decay, the high end doesn't decay faster, but I think that would be something that I would do uh, prior to uh, putting this into a release, would be to add some filters here. And I'm just gonna make some comments about this, is that, all right, this was the number of settings for a small reverb that has only two chains, all pass delay line chains in the loop. So I would have to add four more adjustment blocks to get one of those. There's no uh, filtering in here, so there's no adjustment for the filtering, but typically you would have, and a lot of the reverb examples that you get from spin use the shelving one pulse, which are a very handy little filter to have in your arsenal. And the shelving ones are good for subtle subtle changes in the in the reverb sound which i probably can't hear because my hearing rolls off at about eight kilohertz there you go i would encourage you to mess around with it and have fun and see if you can come up with some nice sounding things maybe maybe come down and see oh well what happens if i move these all down a bit i probably get maybe more of a smaller sounding Of course, here's another thing you can do, which is just make a copy of it. Control C and go over here to patch two. And then we'll drop that in. Over here, I will, ah, that's not what I meant to do. I'll just make some adjustments. Push this over here to about there. And then come back over here. Push this down a bit. If you want to mess around and A, B things, here's a really easy way you could do that by just uh, making copies of that patch in, into these different slots and then adjusting the sound and then you can easily jump back and forth. Interesting way that you could do some A, B testing on this small reverb patch. Prior to putting this into a release, I would add uh, capability for filtering. Maybe not pot adjustment for filtering because then that it just starts getting really complicated and adding more instructions. But the idea behind a small reverb is to have the smallest thing available so you have plenty of room left to do other things with the exception of delay memory, but there's a lot you can do without involving delay memory. Or just have a little bit for a you know, flanger or something like that. But this would be good to combine with, I, I don't know, tremolo or any of the other 8 billion things you can do here. So there you go. Thank you very much.